Trump fights fire with fire. Islamic State, they made it very clear, they fight eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. What do you think of the terrorist attacks that happened in Europe? Bullshit question, do you feel uh, so, sorry for the, uh, so, for, for the French, for the German? You think you don't kill so many people? And you think the, the Islamic State is just going to give you, a, uh, when they see you, they're just going to give you a box of chocolate? Jihadists who regret nothing. Brut interviewed several of them in Syria in December 2019. One of our reporters gained exclusive access to a prison run by Kurdish forces where some 5,000 alleged members of Islamic State were being held. In March 2019, the Islamic State lost the Battle of Baghuz. The defeat ended its territorial presence in Syria, but it raised a serious question. What would happen to the jihadist fighters and their families who were captured in battle? Yeah, I was ISIS, I had the ideology I was in the movie thinking when I take all the world. Of course I regret. I get really brainwashed. The footage and interviews that you are going to see were filmed by Brute's lead foreign correspondent Charles Villa, a French journalist. To get inside this heavily guarded and overpopulated prison, Brute had to agree to two conditions. First, no filming the exterior of the prison for security reasons. Second, no discussing the news with prisoners. To avoid the possibility of a revolt, they hadn't been told that the United States had killed the head of Islamic State, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Every room was packed, with almost no space to move around. Barely any daylight either. The only light that managed to get in was from this window. Some of the prisoners had been captured in the Battle of Baghuz in March 2019 and hadn't left this room since then. The toilets were there, at the back of the room. Just to the right was where they could wash, which they seemed to do with water cans. There was a very strong odor coming out of the cell. Our reporter said it was almost unbearable. One of the prisoners in this room was a young British jihadist who agreed to be interviewed. What do you think of the terrorist attacks that happened in Europe? And what do you think when the coalition, they bomb, they just bomb fighters? When you're constantly bombarding a group of people, don't expect, like, you know, no retaliation. It's going to happen. Have you seen the killings of uh, Western uh, journalists that were be uh, in, on video by British fighters? As I said, for me, for, for me, killing or beheading is something gruesome to me. I don't like it, okay? But if, the, if it's a judgment that's passed by one of the judges of the Islamic State, I might not like it, but who am I to go and challenge the Islamic State? I can tell you a lot of stuff, but on the same time, I, I, I'm risking my health and my safety here because I, I cannot express myself if, fully. If I start saying certain things, there's a translator here, he will start telling the Kurds, he said this, he said that. And once you're gone, they're going to come and beat the power of me. I can tell you more, but I don't want to get in trouble. Our reporter was not alone with the British jihadists. The head of the prison, as well as several members of the Kurdish Special Forces, were in the room with them for the whole interview. Despite that, the man very quickly started to criticize his captors, as well as the conditions inside the prison. I've been sitting in the whole prison for a very long time. Everybody in this room is desperate to get out of, get out, get out of this prison, because pri this prison is not, it's, it, it's not what they claim to be. It's very severe, people are dying here every day lack of medication, one guy died here yesterday. Everybody just wants to get, the, get far away from these people because you're not really getting your basic human rights. Nobody wants to be like a, uh, a captive like this, the way they're treating the prisoners here, it's not good. 
The head of the prison is a member of the Kurdish Special Forces, and obviously he had a very different take on the conditions inside the prison. The British uh, ISIS member that I interviewed told me that uh, he would get bitten if he was telling the truth about this prison. No, no, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's a إنسان كيز إيه فكتي ناف دست سيمادة. جبر أولو أم بيت شيء مناكن. جبر جاخلاقي مجمر أولو ناقو إنسانية عما قبل ناق. أنا خطر أقول كي مازن نبقرت يانا البامة. يعني وقم بلاك حاضر اشتقان دني نم نزعن بيت كي جان تقيد جبت مات بتاق. يعني والبند درفت أقول كي بشوكن خوابد اندر خسن. There have been several attempted prison breaks. In this video, you can see a strategy that the jihadists have used several times. One of the jihadists pretends to be dying in order to distract the guards. When the doors open, the prisoners attack. As a result, our reporter had to be extremely careful wherever he went, especially when visiting the prison hospital, where close to 300 people were crammed together. This is the hospital. Our reporter had to let a guard walk ahead of him at all times. This is as far as he was able to go. The guards explained that if he went any further, it would be impossible to get out if something went wrong. قلك جوان مثلا سيخ ده سوان ده سيخ ده نجي وان ده نخشي يعني نخشي نورمال مثلا نوع وان در بحريكة نأف تشتنا تشتنا نمشي إلى جدة. Many of the prisoners were extremely thin and very weak and looked to be visibly underfed and suffering from malnutrition. Many had bullet wounds, bone pins with external fixations battle wounds on their arms and legs. Like this man, for instance. A bullet must have hit him in the leg. There was also a very strong, almost putrid smell, and our reporter had to wear a face mask. It looked like the people in the hospital had nowhere to wash, and there was only one toilet for the nearly 300 of them. In the middle of these sick and injured prisoners, our reporter interviewed Abdullah, a 24-year-old jihadist from Belgium who had been there for nine months and first joined IS in 2014. Do you have any regret coming to Syria? I don't regret coming to Syria, you know, because I came to help. Like, example, coalition come to help the Kurds. Like, everywhere people want to help me. If bad guys, good guys. Of course, in the beginning, I was ISIS. I had the ideology. I was in the movie thinking when I take all the world. ISIS propaganda, like, you know, is a very very beautiful calm and you can live and everything is okay and then when you come even if you not fight example you, they're gonna kill you or put you in prison if you don't do this you cannot argue with them if they have a rule example the attacks in belgium if you argue with them it's not good or it's bad you cannot speak you know so what do you think of the terrorist attacks that happened in europe and they were targeting innocent people? in Barus, I, I bury uh, four or five babies i saw my own eyes uh, Hundreds of women with no legs, with no arms, with no heads, killing innocent people from both sides. I'm against it. It's bad. Of course, it's very bad what happened uh, to the Belgians in the airport, to the French. I regret to come to the, to the war and fight and destroy my body, my life. I left my mother. Of course, I regret. I just was young, naive. Being this ice, I just was, you know, dumb, believing anything. This is Al-Hol, a giant camp where the families of Islamic State militants now live. 
70,000 people live here, mostly women and children, in extremely difficult conditions. This is the market for women and children from countries outside Syria, where they can buy food and clothes. There is also a store where they can withdraw money that people send to them from abroad. Bonjour. Bonjour. Vous êtes française? Oui. Bah, je suis venu pour rencontrer euh, des françaises. Français. Oui, je suis français. Quel âge vous avez? Vous venez d'où? On est entre 20 et 35. Ouais. Entre Paris et partout de l'Arsène. Comment vous vivez ici C'est quoi la situation sanitaire On a du mal à se chauffer parce qu'il fait très très froid, on est entouré par du bout de tissu. Il ne nous donne pas à manger ou alors c'est quelque chose qui nous donne la diarrhée pendant des semaines. Donc, il n'y a pas beaucoup d'associations humanitaires qui Il n'y a viennent. pas d'association du tout. Il y a pas, on n'a pas de médecin, ah, pas d'hôpital. d'hôpital. Ouais. Qu'est-ce que vous faisiez, vous, au sein de l'État islamique Est-ce que vous aviez des travails Donc j'étais à la maison. Donc à la maison. Femme au foyer. Voilà. Faire des gosses les enfants, euh, faire le ménage, euh, à manger. Euh. Vous avez une vie de femme oui, croyant, voilà. en fait. Bah franchement, euh, c'était euh, c'était bien, on vivait bien, on avait on nos nous, maisons, ouais. on avait nos, nos en fait on, chacun on en avait chacun nos hein? appartements, on vivait avec nos maris, avec nos enfants, il y avait des parcs, il y avait des hôpitaux, il y avait des écoles. C'était la vie normale comme en France en fait, sauf qu'on pouvait vivre notre islam en paix. C'est que dans, vraiment quand ils ont commencé à attaquer Raqqa, que les gens ils ont commencé à fuir, que vraiment on a ressenti la guerre. Like many jihadists, these women from France continued to defend their decision to live under Islamic State. But they were also ready to criticize it. I don't want to be affiliated to them. They don't represent me, I don't represent them. I don't want to be affiliated to their ideology, because for me, it's not Islam. I'm a Muslim, and I'll be there until my death. Euh... Qu'est-ce qui n'était pas selon toi euh, bon, Les attentats suicides, ils les ont légiférés alors que c'est interdit. Et les conditions de la guerre, c'est pas comme ça. Les Quand décapitations, ils en ont fait une grande propagande et tout. C'est euh... ouais. ah ouais, voir décapiter quelqu'un, c'est pas c'est pas naturel. Hein. C'est pas naturel. Ça, évidemment, ça fait vrai. quelque chose. C'est bah, bien sûr. Quand on voit ça, c'est euh, choquant. Après, c'est sûr que notre discours, il peut être, euh, il n'est pas très crédible euh, au vu de la situation, gens. en pensant que tout le monde pense qu'on est euh, dans la même idéologie. En fait, dans la vie, on fait des choses et on des pas bien et des choses bien. Et là, on a fait des choses euh, pas très. Non, la seule chose de pas bien qu'on a fait. Quand je regarde mon fils, non, je ne regrette pas d'être venu parce que c'est le destin. Mais euh, ouais, je regrette de les avoir cru. Non, euh, je regrette de les avoir cru. Je leur en veux à eux. Je n'ai pas, euh, pas une repentie. Je regrette ce que j'ai fait. Non, j'assume. Et, euh, et je suis contente de, du parcours que j'ai eu parce que j'ai euh, appris beaucoup de choses. Vous avez essayé de quitter l'État islamique Oui, on a essayé. C'est un cauchemar. Qui n'a pas essayé La vérité, qui n'a pas essayé La dernière année, on a, on a, on a essayé. Même sans ça, on a essayé de quitter parce que c'était plus possible. C'était plus possible. C'était pas une vie en fait. C'était plus comme au début où ils garantissaient notre sécurité, où on vivait en paix. C'était devenu, même eux, ils étaient devenus complètement injustes dans leur manière de faire. Avec nous, ils étaient, même eux, c'était devenu aussi nos oppresseurs plus que, que, plus la, que, les, que, la, coalition. Autres, que la coalition était devenue oppresseur. On, on était finalement, on n'avait plus d'alliés, donc on voulait vraiment pas sortir de, de chez eux. Mais euh, malheureusement, ils nous coupaient la route, ils nous empêchaient de sortir. Si on essayait de sortir, ils nous mettaient en prison. Moi, j'étais en prison chez eux parce que bah, justement, on a voulu partir, enfin, jusqu'à ce que bah, on se retrouve ici. For now, only a handful of IS family members have returned to their home countries in Europe and North America. What will happen to them there is sure to pose serious legal and ethical complications. <laughs>